play the hot third cover. The hot third, okay. And play the... okay. So, my name is Itai Bardan. Uh, my name is Claire Jen. Uh, David Doyle. Brian Lynch. I'm in my fifth year. We would technically be juniors, but we're in like a postgrad course. I'm uh, on my third year. I'm here to study graphic design. Law school. So both just a year in the law school. Field is uh, computer science. I'm from Taipei, which is the capital of Taiwan. Originally, I grew up in a city called Kfar Saba. It's close to Tel Aviv. Because I'm from Tipperary in Ireland. I'm from Limerick. Do you have friends that play guitar? Here? Like at Actually, home I don't. or here? Or at home, yeah, I have. I always wanted to uh, spend some time uh, outside of Israel, like feeling how is it to live in a different country. This is actually an uh, Israeli song. So my parents always wanted me to study abroad. Um, we actually had to choose, I wanted to go to the US. So America, we, we all want, decided we want to come to America. And we had to choose between three universities that my university has a grievance and agreement with. So Temple was one of them. And I didn't have that much choices throughout like the exchange schools I can choose out of. We do like a four year law school program. So in your third year you go abroad and there's a list of like partner universities. And I chose Temple because it was the only American school. And also because I was born in California, I had a citizenship and also my English is better so that's why I chose. It's just because America like there's not that many to come to America so there's way there, there's like over 30 parent universities in Europe so basically every city in Europe and then America. While you're studying it's uh, best one of the best time to do it because you have the like the community around you and well there are two options that are here in Missouri so we decided to come to Philadelphia. But my father went here once and he told me it's a nice city and it's close to a lot of cool places like Washington and New York. I think that's a good way to get out of your comfort zone. I suppose, uh, I suppose when, you, when you come I think it feels like a bit of a different world. I mean, move into a different place, yeah. different language, different people. Xinzhou is my hometown. Most of my childhood was in Xinzhou. Yeah, it's super windy. Xinzhou's like other name is called Wind City because it's literally, the, the wind there is like so strong all the time. Even in other, other cities in Taiwan, they don't believe how Xinzhou is so windy until they live there for a while and they realize like, yeah. Um, so Xinzhou is actually famous for their um, glass art. Traditionally, it's made. Um, they make glass art. So there's a glass art museum. I grew up in Kfar Saba. A lot of families lived there and grew up their uh, children. Um, what we used to do, we have uh, Erzelia Beach very close to us, so it was a uh, uh, thing that. We used to do on the weekends, just take the car and go for uh, the beach. And it's close to everywhere. Like I said, the Celia Beach and Tel Aviv, and it's, it's in, uh, in the center of, Tel Aviv, of uh, Israel.
from Limerick, so. But uh, there's a rugby stadium there, which is pretty famous around the world, uh, called Thoman Park, and I'd be big into rugby and. Yeah, it's like probably famous. it's pretty. It's probably the most famous rugby stadium around. I mean, people travel from like New Zealand to come see matches there and stuff. But um, like, there's a really good atmosphere and stuff, and there's like all around it is great. It's all good fun. So I used to go, we go to every game when I'm home, and uh, I haven't gone to a, a few in the last few years because of COVID and whatnot. But me and my dad and my brother would always uh, would always go to the games. So. So I, we bought a house like 30 years ago down in this place called Castle Gregory. Yeah. And if I was to describe it to you, you wouldn't even believe it. It's like a sand spit into the middle of this ocean. So like there's a town, then literally just a sand spit out. And it's like literally surrounded by trees, sides and water. And then there's a bunch of islands off, the, off it. Just grew up doing that and then go kayaking out to the islands. You can go fishing. Then you just go to the, there's one pub, so there's about 200 people in the town and 150 in the pub on a Friday night. So, like, it's it's just brilliant. Um, okay, so in Taiwan, I often like go to cafes just to like do work stuff and. Um, school stuff too and then just like stay there for a whole day. Yeah, I normally just go at like one and then stay until dinner time and then I go home and have dinner. But uh, my hobbies include like swimming, working out, and riding bikes. We also have like the similar city bikes in Taiwan but it's like really it's really light and it's really easy to ride. It's even like better than your own nice. bikes. Yeah. So I used to play basketball all of my childhood. And my friends from the king kindergarten actually, Omri, uh, he told me that he joined the basketball I don't know, group or team. So I just followed him and that's what we did all day. I mean, we, we met up uh, close to the court, walked together. I have a passion for music. I tried to learn how to produce music actually on my free time. No, electronic, yeah, I like to do remix, that's how I learned. Yeah, I played, I mean, I also like rock, I play the guitar, I started when I was uh, seven, then I stopped and continued, now I just play for, for fun, you know, for myself. What I also did is hiking, Kay white water kayaking. Did all that kind of outdoorsy stuff like that. You both have an interest in alcohol as well. Alcohol is big on it. We go like pub where we go there whenever we want to drink. Well, you he, gets, been too drunk. he gets he uh, gets coke because he's twenty, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you ever wanted to meet someone, you wouldn't meet them for a coffee. You meet them for a pint. Do you know, it's not really like that's how you meet people, and you could often walk into the pub near a college in Ireland on your own, not having another planet, and your friends will be there. So you're just, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of different. I do like graphic design, and it's more of a work thing, I would say. But um, at the same time, I enjoy the work but normally I wouldn't want to like overload myself with like the same kinds of hobbies I do. I like to like, um, like do everything here and there. Um, the reason why I started like getting into graphic design was because of a book that had like all these different kinds of samples of the same poster, but with like different layouts. And it asks you like, which one is the better design? And when I was like probably in middle school, I would like, look through the book all the time and like just test out my skills for being like having a good 
eye for graphic design and stuff like that yeah and that was probably when I started to realize like I, I'm kind of good at this and I like it yeah mm -hmm. and in high school I started to make some like little stuff or uh, in school like badges or folders and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah we had uh, some kind of uh, you can call it majors that you have to choose in your high school so I chose computer science. I mean, I've, I've always had the interest in computer science and my father is a software engineer, so he like taught me. And my uncle was working in a law firm in Dublin and I went up there for a week and I just really liked the work. I really liked the lifestyle up there. So that's kind of probably when I decided. And I guess in law, I suppose you have the opportunity to help people. I think you, again, in a lot of the big law firms as well, that you do have the chance to do like pro bono work. So it's like working with refugees and immigrants who can't, who can't afford like legal like services. It's kind of um, different from Taiwanese classes, I guess, a little bit. Um, in computer science especially, because uh, I feel like the classes here that people take on their third year are similar to the classes that we take in Israel on the first year. Because in Ireland we don't have to, we don't have to do four years and then go to law school. We can okay. just start law school straight yeah. after, straight after that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I'm saying. If I wanted to get a job in this field, I could, but I felt that I want to um, learn about other things uh, outside of cyber, which. There's a lot you always can learn. You can go into it initially as just law, and then you can pick after your first year whether you want to do law international, which is what we're doing, or you can do law clinical, which is instead of doing a year abroad, you do a year in a, like a law firm and you do a year working instead of uh, going abroad to a different college. But uh, I like being in college, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only get four years, so make the most of it. I did a lot of volunteering and stuff when I was in secondary school, so I volunteered in India. So we had a chance to go to, well, it's like three students get picked to go to Calcutta to volunteer. You're basically just working with children, like the street and some children with the organization. And like you just, and you're like helping with education and stuff like that. Yeah, you just like help in the, like in the classroom and then like, it's just like you do activities and stuff, so they play football and stuff. You just, anything that can like try brighten up their day or whatever like that's what the money goes towards like it's their education food and healthcare and accommodation like it's america is so different to and kind of everywhere in europe is very similar when you come to america it's even just all even like the infrastructure and like all the people and like just the whole culture is completely different. Yeah, it's just it's so as it is. The streets are different. The streets are different. We use uh, smaller uh, bricks uh, in the streets. Yeah, that's what came up to my <laughs> to my head. And the buildings are older in Israel. Um, I mean, Israel it's very young. It's uh, seventy years old. So we built a lot of the buildings so fast to uh, um, bring people in. I, I actually kind of miss the transportation. But mostly, all Taiwanese people ride scooters. <laughs> and we also have high-speed rail and regional train rails. In Taipei, we have like roads uh, bike like tracks just for bikes. The bike lanes in Taiwan are on the pedestrian sidewalks. It's like the, the raw ingredients in America are so much worse. Yeah. It brings just pumped you know, the pump pumped with hormones and antibiotics and then like you all have like you pay a load of money to get like organic stuff but yeah. nobody does that now because everything is pretty good anyway
Taiwan is much safer. I feel really safe there. Like if if someone got shot in Ireland, it would be like it's, it's like a huge thing. It yeah, it's crazy. Like, um, in Taiwan, like those kind of things happen really seldom. Like probably once a year. It's like really creepy. You have to like be alert all times, but in Taiwan you can just I in Taiwan I often like after I get I go to a bar and I leave the bar at like one or two. I just walk home or just mm -hmm. like walk 30 minutes or 40 like minutes. Here that risk, you know. My you can't. Yeah, you have to take a Uber or a Lyft. And yeah. It would be like a really big news. It would never be like just a random like text message of oh, T alert, beware of like somewhere and somewhere. I noticed that it's much more difficult to make a, a strong connection with someone. People are like, it's kind of weird. They're like overly friendly at the beginning, but then. It's kind of hard to read people because they're so nice. Everyone's so Everyone's like, too, like no one, no one, no one be nice like, to your face, and if they don't like you, just, either yeah, we don't like you. Just go no away, one will say it here. Like, they'll just tell you to go away, but they'll be so nice to you here, and then you might meet him, and then you might meet him a few more days. Honest, I wouldn't yeah. say blunt. I'd say it's more honest. Like so I mean, there's so no nice. point. Like if I didn't like him, I wouldn't talk to him. <laughs> the, the, the when you meet someone, they just like. In Ireland, like at the beginning, if you might think we might a bit more weird. It doesn't matter to me, it's so, And if I don't like him, there's more likely he doesn't like me. So why would either of us talk to each other? It's very easy to speak with people, but not to, I mean, beyond that, it's something else. I have a lot of uh, Instagram friends, you know what I mean? Yeah, the language makes it uh, difficult sometimes. It's also, there are some phrases that you can't really translate in English. So you, I feel like you kind of changing your Maybe that's a big word, but changing your personality when you're speaking a different language. You have to say, have a good one, have a good day. This is, this is weird, like, we don't, we don't yes. do that. And the second thing is like, opening doors for other people. It's so weird. I hate it. <laughs> We're shy. So we don't talk like that. We don't say things like that, mm -hmm. unless we know each other or really close. But uh, yeah, I suppose we are adapting into it, really. We have become more comfortable, just like a day-to-day -day routine. You're not going to class, doing your readings. Really, I'd say like here we only came over knowing five of us, and then we can't really expand as much. So like we're just slowly kind of expanding, and then I'd say once you do get to know the same amount of people here as you do in Ireland, you'd probably, I feel we'd probably have the same sense of community as we would yeah. here back in Ireland. In terms of, I mean, I don't know. The streets look different and the cities look different. Um, yeah, it's, you can say it's different, but at the end of the day, uh, people, I feel like people are the same. I met a lot of students from Europe and uh, Asia and everything, and we could speak about the same interests. That's a good point. Like, the human race, we all have a lot of differences, but the same sort of things bring us. Yeah. In.